Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, like the Jesuits at the Vatican. Beware of the concision, for we, Church of the Living God, we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit, lowercase s, and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. That is Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 3. Verse 1. To write the same things to you, to me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Please, get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures that we are going to be looking at today. Be a Berean. Okay? Check me out. Follow me along. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove, okay? Because like I said, sometimes I do that, okay? Uh, the mouth <laughs> gets going a little bit more faster than the brain, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, brethren, we have to remember something. We have to remember about the enemy that is on the altar, okay? You're going to see the thumbnail. But we have to remember something. We have to remember something. Our enemies who work for the Vatican, <clears throat> our enemies that hate the Lord and hence hate us, there's no Shabbat for them. There's no pause. Okay? 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 on to verse 9. Be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, who resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Uh, yesterday, I, I um, for example, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. I always knew that this little old me, I'm not the only one that YouTube likes to harass. But, you know, yesterday I, I noticed uh, another brother of ours is like, wow, YouTube even, you know, harasses YouTube. Sorry, brother. But, you know, but the point is, brethren, we got to remember about our enemies. Our enemies that are up at the wee hours of the night. Up at the crack of dawn. We have to remember this about our enemies who are of Satan himself. And serve and work for the Vatican. Proverbs 4 verse 16. For they sleep not. Except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. Our enemies are not like us. Oh, they are they are man like we are. They are, they are spirit. They are soul. And they are body. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. But you, you got to remember Ephesians 6.12, okay? We have to... Re you got to remind us of you, this to you again, brethren. I, I have to. And you who are not saved, you need to get your head out from betwixt your buttocks. Ephesians 6.12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay? The spirit that is within these coadjutors, these people who work for the Vatican, is that spirit of Antichrist. And they don't rest. They don't sleep. I mean, okay, they eventually sleep, but... Their whole thing is to make us a target. 
That's what they're about. And they have, I mean, they go to uh, media here. They have multiple channels on all the sources of media. They like dung. They spread themselves out like whores. Like whores. Because they are whores. Whores of the Vatican. They're everywhere. They don't rest unless they cause some to fall. They're not like us, brethren. They're not like us. And see, the bait of Satan, the bait of Satan, is the media. You could say it's television. But see, television and media, it's, it's media because who here can remember 10 to 20 years ago when televisions, uh, you, you older people out there, you will remember this, televisions that were in those big wooden boxes that you could put a cloth over and it could double as a table uh, for you, okay? You know, remember those big old televisions that weighed 300 pounds uh, encased in a thing of wood that looked like a table? Okay? And then the evolution of media through television, then it went to what? The big flat screen looking things, but they were still encased in like a thing or whatever, and they weighed half a ton. Okay? All right? But now it's, uh, it has evolved to the flat screen. Televisions that are probably about that thick and that are like, what, 72 inches or how many? Huge. Huge. Okay? All right? Um, my stepson and his family, they got one of them huge. It's, it's vexing to ever go over there. Even though he's a very good host and a wonderful cook. Yes. But, nonetheless, got this big, huge, flat screen, whatever, on their wall. Huge! Huge! And those, you know, when we go to the Wally World, those are targets for me and my wife, you know. Because they got usually got the handles in them. You go in there and you stick tracks in there and stuff like that. But, I mean, yeah, these, these huge, huge things, okay? These huge things. But you got to remember, too, the media, which used to be only relegated to television with the inception of the Internet. You have a little television. If you got one of these things, you got a little television with you wherever you go. Think about that. You know, one of the reasons, and I'm not justifying or making excuses. One of the reasons why, brethren, I am very difficult to get a hold of is because I work at keeping this right there in Brother Alexander's room and going out there and being with my wife, okay? But see, also, you got to remember, too, in this age of information, right? Me personally, if I'm going to research something, I, I would rather have paper. I would rather have a book. Okay? That, you know, I don't have that big of a book collection. I used to have a bigger one. But, you know, I would rather have printed page to research something. Okay? But unfortunately... Books cost money. And people say, well, go to the library, Brad. I've already tried that. You know, trying to find some stuff about, like, Jesuits and Freemasonry and, uh, you know, stuff, uh, books uh, speaking against Catholicism and, and all their nonsense. You're not going to find that at a library. At least not a library by me. If you're somewhere and they got that kind of stuff at a library, good. Okay, but books cost money. Okay? Books cost money. And yes, while I would ha rather have a book, you can go online. 
and there's all kinds of information at your fingertips. You know, for example, recently um, I've been looking into professional wrestling and the witchcraft and sorcery and the devilment that's involved in professional wrestling. What, what if something's going to come from that? I don't know. That's up to the Lord. But um, you know, to find a lot of that stuff, got to be online. You know, I, I mean, I wouldn't know the first place to get a, how, where to get a book on that about at the angle <laughs> that the Lord is having me to approach it on, you know. But see, also, too, when you are looking things online, it takes time. And see, the bait is once you're on it. The distraction is like, well, oh, here, check out this site. Oh, check out this site. OK. And I, I can't stand reading online. I mean, you know, you get you see some of these people who wear these that look like these sunglasses and stuff like that. Um, that the reason why some of them do that is to cut down on the glare from the blue or whatever. OK, I, I understand it. And these are from people who spend a lot of time online. You know, like you got that that jerk from Indiana, okay, okay. Bless his heart, okay. He 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 wears he in videos he had the glasses on. I understand why, okay. He's a journalist, okay. And being a journalist, he's got to be online all the time. And if he didn't do something with the the strain on his eyes, uh, the 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 idiot would go even crazier than he is. Okay, but I understand it. He's a journalist. That's what he does. So he's got to wear the blue things. Okay, but see the trapping right there of being online. It snares you. Ah, it traps you. Because now look at another thing. Look at another thing. Look at another thing. And then you, you, you got to reach the point where you say, stop. Stop. Whoa. Time out. Put it down. Turn it off. Get away from it. Because it's like that. It's like that. Yes, you know, people like to compare the media, internet and stuff like, uh, <laughs> as to a weapon, a gun. A gun could be used for good intentions, and intentions, uh, intentions, excuse me, I'll get it out, and purposes, or it could be used for evil, murder. And stuff like that. Um, force. Okay? And yeah. In many ways. Media. The internet. Television. Is like that. We can find our information. Hey, hey, you're watching me right now, ain't you? Right? But see, brethren, there has to be a time when you say, okay. Okay? It's not, if you wake up in the morning and you turn on the television and the thing is on for 10 to 12 hours a day, that's a problem. That's a very, very big problem, brethren, people. Well, I'm doing it for background noise. Okay. Okay. There's, uh, there's on the channel here, uh, recommendations. Um, that squirrel channel, the, you know, the, the old guy with the smile on his face, hymns, okay? Joyful noise, joyful noise, okay? Check out his brother Alexander, the hymns, okay? Hey, background noise, go ahead, find uh, someone who reads the scriptures. Have that as background noise, okay? If you must. If you must. But see, the, the, the hook, the lure, is, okay, I'm only going to use it for a while. But what happens? This, I fall into this too. Okay? I'll be looking up something and it's like, oh, uh, and then conveniently, here comes a little stupid pet video. Or a little stupid um, a pet short See a, a little booty titty cat chewing on something and drops it and then goes like, ah, like that. Oh, I ain't that cute. And one thing leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. First Corinthians chapter seven. First Corinthians chapter seven. 
1 Corinthians chapter 7. We got to be, and brethren, here, my countrymen in America, what's the bait that Satan's using? Okay, what's the bait that Satan's using right now? The Jesuits are going to select for us a new president. Okay, so what's the hook? What's the hook? Seeing what uh, Trump is doing, right? See what the, what the Jesuits are feeding us, right? For their selection coming up. Entertainment. This is a quote from, you know, looking into the professional wrestling. This is a quote from um, uh, the Unreal History of Professional Wrestling. A quote from that, which I remember from long ago, and I, I've seen it recently. You can judge a society on how it entertains itself. You can judge a society on how, how it entertains itself. And like this quote, look at the Romans. Okay, look at the Romans. At first, how were they entertaining themselves? Pure athletic uh, events. There was javelin, there was running, there was wrestling and stuff like that. But what happened? As it began to decline beginning to feed the church of the living God to the lions. Gladiatorial combat, both male and female. And look at it today in professional wrestling. Mixed martial arts. Yeah, they're, they're, they're you know, they're, yeah. Uh, yeah, seeing two women beat the snot out of each other in MMA and get the side of their face all swelled up. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's entertainment. Right? Look at America. Look at your nation. Now, that you got to remember, too, not every person's spirit, soul, and body is ensnared such in this thing. Um, we all, most of us, not all, most of us, excuse me, have one of these things. But those who don't, you still have internet. And how convenient it is that you go to look up something online and the next thing you know, I spent four hours online? I came here, I came here looking up, uh, 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 uh uh, how to change spark plug, okay? And the next thing you know, I'm watching cats jumping off of roofs and dogs uh, sniffing, the, the, whatever. It's like, ugh, what? Same thing could be said for them video games, that filth, okay? You, you, okay, you go to play a video game, right? It's like, well, I'm going to just play it for an hour. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. No, you pick up one of those things. You say, I'm only going to play for an hour. And then the, um, the, the key, you keep doing it and the reward you get, right? All right. That manipulation that Satan uses. Okay. You keep going, you keep going and you'll get a reward. You keep going, you'll get a reward, a reward, a reward. Okay. But not every, I mean, there are some out there who don't, you know, they use it, they use the internet, they use the media, but then they can put it away. It doesn't consume them. But there are those out there that it does consume. Where it becomes the enemy on the altar. And you, you give yourself over to the media, television and whatnot for hours in the day. You're opening the door for devils. Watching feminist television shows that paint man as feeble weaklings that need a domineering, strong-willed woman to push them through the door. Hence, feminism is glorified. Or the toxic masculinity where man is treating a woman as a piece of meat, as an object. It's not good, brethren. It's not good. 
You know, again, the argument is, well, there are some good things here. Hey, Brad, you know, you know, we're watching, uh, we watch sermons and amen, amen. But brethren, you got to reach a place. People, you have to put it down. You need to step away from it. You need to say, okay, I, and I, I, I cherish days like this. Unplug everything, put it away. Sit here. Like the one brother from Africa said to me. It's like, you know, brother, you Americans, with all your electronic entrapments and all that stuff, what would, what would happen if you had to sit there in silence with your wife or with your husband? Just sit there without a distraction of the internet or television or radio or anything. You just sit there. What would your relationship be like then? What would your relationship be like with the Lord if all the distractions were taken away? Hmm? It's easy to do. It's easy to do. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 on to verse 35. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives Wives be as though they had none. Well, what, what, like, so what does that mean? Paul's talking about the, well, you're married, but pretend you don't have a wife. The scripture will explain what this means. So we're going to keep reading, okay? The scripture will explain verse 29. Let's keep reading. And they that weep as though they wept not. And they that rejoice as though they rejoice not. And they that buy as though they possessed not. And they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. Look at verse 31 there. And what's, what's, what do some of these Christians, it's like, well, we got to be in the world. Yes, Paul talks about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Yes, we are in the world, not of the world. But Christianity tells you to become of the world in order to win the world. Like the old saying, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. <laughs> I don't think so, Jack. And then they say, well, uh, uh, Paul became this. He was made all those things, okay? Okay, he number one submitted himself unto the Lord. And it's like, the Lord's like, okay, I'm going to send you to places you never thought of. I'm going to put you in situations that you, you, you better keep your eyes on me, Jack, or you're going to be in trouble. It's like, okay. Okay, that's what that's talking about. But verse 31 specifically, and they that use this world is not abusing it. Are you abusing it? Rather, or is it abusing you? Oh, think about that one, Jack. Huh? Think about that one. Yeah. You sit down, okay. And hey, hey. Hey. Hi. Okay. Yesterday, looking up things on my cell phone, not out here. I, I, I brought it out there, okay? Okay, I did. Yeah, I like to keep it here. Why? Because what happens yesterday? Um, looking up things and yet diverted, uh, looking at little cats and dogs and uh, cooking. And that. it's like, ah, come in here, put in the Brother Alexander's room. It's like, ah, put it away. You got to shut it off. See, because our enemies, they don't rest unless they cause some to fall. Our enemies. Their lives are intertwined with this, the media. That's all they're about. That's how they spend their time on the media. I understand some of the brethren. It's like, you know, Brad, <laughs> I have a brother say to me, it's like, you know, Brad, I'm really getting just disassociated with the media and that kind of stuff. I mean, it's like, you know, just turn it off and get around actual persons, spirit, soul, and body. I understand that. I understand that. I understand that. Verse 32. Now, about verse 29. 
Okay, and what Paul's talking about. Scripture is going to explain itself. But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. So what does this mean? Verse 29. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. It doesn't, Paul's not saying to you, it's like, okay, you're married, but pretend you don't have one so you can go out and fornicate. And, no, 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 no. No. I'm married. I have to. I have to care for things of the world. Okay? How what? All right, but he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, verse 33, how he may please his wife. Boy, my wife sure does love it, uh, is well pleased um, when she's able to eat something. My wife is well pleased when we can turn on a heater. Okay? My wife is well pleased when we have a roof over our head. Okay? Remember, the scripture saying, having food and raiment, let us be there with content. House, electricity, <laughs> indoor plumbing, okay? Those are luxuries. They really are. They really are. Okay? What Paul is talking about in verse 29 is not giving anyone credence to, it's like, well, I'm married, but yet, see, it says, uh, to be as though I didn't have a wife. So that gives me time to ignore my wife and to ignore her and uh, ignore taking care of her and pleasing her. No, no. What Paul is talking about is how we are supposed to be centered on the Lord. Okay? And also not to have your wife or your husband be the thing that consumes you. I know some of you sisters out there, you fall into that. That your husband is all you're about. But, but wait a minute, okay? The head of the man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. But yet, in me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Okay? That's what that's talking about. It's about, he's talking about putting the Lord first. And because, hey, I love my wife. My wife loves me. But if it ever becomes a, a thing between, well, you better, you choose me or the Lord. That's what he's talking about. That's what he's talking about. Okay. You don't, if you have a, a husband or a wife who says to the other, it's either me or your Jesus. You mean my Jesus who is the God of the scripture? You're really going to do that to me? It's either me or him. Okay. I choose Jesus. That's what Paul's talking about. Okay? Okay? That's what Paul is talking about. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Okay? And if you are in a position or putting someone in a position where it's either me or the Lord, that's what he's talking about. Okay? Let's continue. There's a difference of uh, verse 34. Verse 34 in 1 Corinthians 7. There's a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And you got to remember, Eve was made for Adam, not Adam for Eve. Okay? And hey... You're one of those women out there who have no desire, who have no necessity. Good for you. Stay that way. Dedicate your life 
to be one who washes the feet of the saints. Who, um, who, if able to do whatever for the saints, not be a preacher or teacher, because that's what, that's what the man's supposed to do. But you as a woman who doesn't have a husband, who doesn't have a head covering, okay? All right? There are many things you can do. You're not supposed to be a preacher or a teacher, okay? You're not supposed to. If you're doing that, you're going contrary to Scripture, okay? But there are many things that you could do as a woman, okay? What does it say there? That she may be holy both in body and in lowercase spirit, okay? But she that is Mary careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. Please her husband. My wife's a great cook. Oh, she is. That also encompasses the marriage bed. Yes, it does. And you know, when you withhold that from one another, or with, when one is using the marriage bed as a means to manipulate the other, or to control, you got problems. Or if you're going to be one who uh, withholds from your husband or from your wife. Okay? Verse 35. And this I speak for your own profit. Not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely. And that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. Without distraction. So, wow, Brad, then it's better that we be not married. No, not necessarily. If you read 1 Corinthians chapter 7, Paul's like, hey, if you get married, you're doing well. But if you're not getting married, you're doing better. You, you, you read 1 Corinthians 7 on your own time. Okay? All right? Paul says it himself. Hey, if you're going to get married, that, that's fine. You're not sinning. You can't control, compose yourself? Fine. Get married. One of the reasons why we get married. Okay? One of the re one of the reasons. Okay? Okay? Get married. But there again, if you don't, that's a little bit better. Okay? It is. That, that's scripture, Jack. And that you may attend upon the Lord without distraction without distraction because when you have someone that is dependent upon you and you need to be mindful of worldly things in order to be a provider distractions come don't they don't they and what a way to distract you then having a little television in your pocket you don't have these good praise the lord but you got a uh, Laptop or computer, right? You know, you don't need a television as it were. That's the whole thing. We have internet now. And you got to remember the mark of the beast. 666 www the world wide web. The mark of the beast that goes into the right hand or into the forehead. Okay? That's going to be intrinsically linked with Internet, World Wide Web. There are some that like to argue about 666, about how it's a, a seat in the United Nations or something to do with, the, with England. Or, no, 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 no. By or sell, it's going to be an electronic thing, okay? Which we are seeing, we see the blueprints before us nowadays when people can take their health phone, swipe a scanner thing, and they can pay for it like that, you know? Cashless society. And, you know, that's what Satan is building up, preparing people for. Okay? You got to remember that. Okay? Yes, the inter internet media can be, the Lord uses, the Lord has his representation on the media. Yes! But see, so does the devil. 
And if you haven't noticed already, there are a lot of Christians on YouTube and on other platforms. But you got to remember to our enemies who call themselves Christians working for the Vatican. Okay? They work for the Vatican. Uh, they're also on all the platforms and have multiple channels on all the platforms as well. So, yes, the Internet, the media can be used for good things, as it were. And what is good? There's none good but what? But who? God, right? Yes. Yes, you can go here on YouTube and, and listen to uh, uh, Scorby. Yes, you can. Praise the Lord. There are godly brethren here on YouTube, and you can go to their stuff and listen uh, and listen to what they got to say. Yes, there are. Yes, there are. Yes, there are. But there's a whole lot of tares amongst wheat. And those tares lead into distraction. And that distraction can consume you. We have to have moderation, brethren. We have to have moderation. Sometime this week. The week's almost over. Uh, tomorrow is the end of the week. Saturday, okay? Take a day and turn everything off. Just one day. A 24-hour period. Can you do that? I know, well, well, well Brad, I, I can't physically do that. If I, I can't do this, I can't. Take a day and turn everything off. One day. Like I said, like the brother from Africa said to me, like, what, what would you do if you had nothing and you just had to sit there? Just sit there. And B, just sit there with your wife or with your husband. With no distractions of the internet or of television. What how would you what would you do? How could you handle it? Could you be civil to each other for an hour like that? Hmm? Psalm 101. And the closer we are getting to the redemption of the purchased possession, the more readily that Satan can distract us through media. Like I said, brethren, go online looking for something, uh, researching something, uh, taking uh, notes, you know, sticky notes and putting them, you know, it's like this one's that one, or writing it down, yes. But then what happens? You get a little weary and then and then up conveniently comes a distraction. Psalm 101. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. And we are to speak unto each other in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way, wisely in the fear of the Lord. In a perfect way, Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? What is the perfect way? It's found for us in Scripture. Um, dependent on the dispensation. Okay? You want to walk in a perfect way? Read the Pauline epistles, doctrinally, doctrine for us today, how to walk in a perfect way. And also encompass the Old Testament. For all, all things that were written before time were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. You know, you don't neglect the Old Testament. You neglect the Old Testament, you're crippling yourself. You want to learn how to fear the Lord? Read the Old Testament. Okay? But the perfect way is Jesus Christ. And the way he would have us to walk according to this dispensation. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. And a perfect heart is a broken and contrite heart. A perfect heart is a heart that belongs unto the Lord, not unto that. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. There are people out there that actually will say, 
The images and the things on TV, they don't cleave onto you. You are so full of dung, it's not even funny. I, to this day, 15 years walking with the Lord, going on, I can still remember bits of Hollywood movies that I saw when I was a teenager. I can't remember certain memories when I was a teenager, but I can darn sure remember some of the things that I saw once when I was a teenager. Hmm? Doesn't cleave to you. I can still remember the music. Those visions that are etched in there by Hollywood. Pornography. Art. <laughs> So-called. If forward heart shall depart from me, I will not know a wicked person. We are to prefer one another. Yes, we are going to be in the world, but we're not supposed to be of the world. What fellowship hath light with darkness? Okay? How can you truly call yourself, have a friend who is lost? How? How? Whoso privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath a high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. Mine eye shall be upon the faithful of the land. See, it says right there, we are to prefer one another. Okay? Not neglecting, not neglecting those who need to hear the truth or need help. No, but when it comes to hanging out, but what? What what do I have in common with someone who's going to talk that wants to spend uh, hours talking to me about football? Huh? What can you have in common with someone whose whole life is about what they see on television? What fellowship can you have with that? Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. We're supposed to prefer one another. You know? When it comes to um, fellowship with the brethren, ours, ours with the brethren. Why? Because, the, because of the Lord, kindred spirits, okay? Like-mindedness. Because we serve the same God. But what happens when your God is the enemy on the altar? Hmm? What happens when you're worshiping the enemy on the altar? Well, I'm not worshiping it or no, bowing down to it and praying to it. Maybe you're not. But who do you spend more time with? Hmm? Oh, they can... Well, Brad, what about you? I'm aware, number one, of this problem. Number two, I take steps myself to try to distance, okay? Does it always work? No, 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 it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell in my house, within my house, he that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. What do you get through the television or through media, huh? Yes, you can find truth. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, you can. But the percentage of truth within media, the majority of it is what? Deceit. Because what is Satan pro with these stupid television shows that promote feminism or this toxic masculinity or whatever it is, okay? They, to, to entertain you, they give you fantasy. They give you deceit. Satan offers fantasy, which is a lie, which is deceit. It's not real. That's what you get. News. News loosely based on actual events, okay? It's deceit. It's fraud. Okay? It's not real. 
reality television. You dear, dear, and I mean this in the southern way. Bless your heart. Okay? Reality TV is not reality TV. Okay? Look at, look at that schmuck, the schmuck commander and schmuck dynasty. Okay? It's performance. It's performance. Okay? It's not real. It's not real life. Okay? He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. Who works deceit? Satan. And how do you let Satan in your house? Might not have an actual, uh, like a statue or an idol or whatever, fine. You do have the media. You do have the internet. Yes, the internet could be used for good things, yes. And there is none good but God, yes. But the ratio, there's more evil than good. Especially the farther we go. Okay? Especially the farther we go. All right? He that telleth not lies shall not tarry in my sight. Tarry, sit there. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. And of course, uh, go to... Deuteronomy chapter 7. Hold your place because I want to um, compare scripture with scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 7. I can almost do this from verbatim. Verses 25 and 26. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, the glamour, the glitz, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. And that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Verse 7 in Psalm 101, He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. The way it is nowadays to reach the most people using the internet, obviously. But as we have already seen, those that use the world don't abuse it. Because what happens? You can get snared and diverted and distracted. It's easy to do. It happens. It happens very, very easily because we got to remember, brethren. We we got to remember Second Corinthians chapter two, just one verse, verse eleven. Okay, the, uh, for me to say the same things to you is not grievous, <laughs> but for you it is safe. Okay, Second Corinthians eleven. Remember, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And again, again, like I've, I've, we've talked about this at, in depth, at length, okay? But you, you need to remember this. Because how easy is it for you to escape? Oh, wow, what's that? Oh, wow, what's that? Oh, wow, what's that? Oh, wow, right? I, hey, hey, I do it too. But we have to have moderation. We need to step away from these things. Why? Lest Satan get, uh, get an advantage of us. We mustn't be ignorant of his devices. See, when, when we're on the internet, online media, we need to have moderation. Because even though there are good, you know, preaching and uh, you can hear the scriptures, yes, praise the Lord, but the majority of it is of Satan. We're on Satan's territory. Satan owns the chessboard because it's been given to him from the Lord for judgment. But he don't own the pawns. 
Same thing with YouTube. Uh, we're, we are on the chessboard of YouTube. They can monetize your video. They can take views away, take away dislikes. Dislikes. I've talked to you about that before. There are, you know, when someone dislikes a video, um, it's not probable that someone who dislikes it, like I've said before, uh, the one uh, there was the one video that had uh, what was it, 15 dislikes, and then um, after the uh, four-day rollover that YouTube does uh, to not just me but to other uh, brethren as well, okay, um, it goes from 15 to three dislikes. Or no dislikes. It's like, ah, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't jive. See, but see there again. Luke chapter four, five and eight, and the devil taking him up into a high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him. All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whosoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And like I've said to you countless times, how does the, how does the devil do this for you, us, the common folk? Oh look, oh, look at that little cute dog chasing its tail. Oh, look at that deep fried thing. Oh, wow. How does that Asian, how does that uh, Shemite stay so thin eating all that good food? Oh, look at that cat. Oh, oh, look at that car. I wish I had one. I can remember the good old days, right? Oh, boy, are you on there? It's like, wow, that's what Costa Rica must look like. Wow, I wouldn't. I'd love to go to Costa Rica one day, huh? Not really. I'm just using that as an example. Huh? Verse eight. And Jesus answered and said unto him, "Get thee behind me, Satan! For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and Him only shalt thou serve." When your mind is gravitating to the things that you have seen online and you're consumed by that. Now, the scriptural definition of worship, uh, the link for that will be in the description box, okay, is one thing, yes. But when the things that you see on media start to consume your mind and they start to take the place of uh, the things of the Lord, that's a problem. That's a problem. That's a big problem. And it's such a problem in some that, okay, you're of the church of the living God and you would rather spend uh, a majority of, your, of the time during the day that we have been given by the Lord in front of the idiot box That's a problem. That's a problem. What are you going to do about it? Hmm? Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. What are you, what are you doing? Thank <laughs> you, part. Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 on to verse 26. And, and right here, verse 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not your li use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Right again, right away, this is and this is pertinent to this. Those who justify being yoked up for with the Vatican one day out of the year. And then cause all this division and strife and accuse saved people of being lost because they're telling, hey, that's from the Vatican. That was created by Rome. It's of Rome. And you're going to promote it and justify it 
Because yes, all things are lawful for you. Yes, but see, what are they doing? They're using their liberty for an occasion of the flesh. I have no respect for someone who is going to protest the Vatican and talk and expose the Jesuits. But yet, for one of the biggest days to the whore, they're going to yoke themselves up to it and defend it. That don't, that, no, no. I, I, don't, I don't take a guy seriously like that. You're going to talk about the Vatican and the Jesuits, but yet you're going to rabidly defend the 25th of December and cause division and strife and accuse saved people of being lost because they're, the saved people are like, hey, whoa, ho, ho, hold on. That's from Rome. It's pagan. I, how, how, are you, how are you going to take someone like that seriously, brethren, people? Huh? How? Tell me. Tell me, how, how can someone who's going to defend it and then in the next couple of months do a video against the Jesuits and you're supposed to take that individual seriously? I'm telling you what, boy. I'm telling you what. You're against the Jesuits, but yet you're going to defend one of Catholicism's biggest days, and it's a day that came from the from Rome, Mystery Babylon. Ain't got no respect for a guy like that. Anyone like that. Okay? None. You're going to be, you know, talking against the Vatican. You're against Jesuits, and oh, they make you mad, but yet you're going to defend... One, you're going to defend one of their biggest days. But there, but okay, forgive that little rant. That that's over and done with. We got bigger fish to fry. That's a perfect example, though. Use liberty for an occasion to the flesh. All things are lawful for me. I have the liberty to go online and look at things, don't I? But when does it become an issue of occasion for the flesh? Hmm? Looking up some information that I can't afford to get in a book or, or something like that. Or look at a PDF and I hate reading things online. It's like, okay, okay. All right, looking at a PDF kind of thing. It's like, ah. That, you know, like I said before, you know, if you're looking at a PDF online, you know, it would be a good idea to get the, some of them blue blocker sunglass kind of things because you, you, you read something online after a while, it's like, oh, it's like a knife in your skull, you know what I'm saying? I understand why some of these journalists uh, do that because they got to spend all this time online. I understand. I understand. Okay. I understand. All right? I do. But when does it become, what's that line when it becomes an occasion of the flesh? When you spend time looking up something and you, it's like, oh, okay. Oh, I need a break. Oh, look at that little cat. Okay? For all the law, okay, for brethren, let's read verse 13 again. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed. Consumed one of another. Be consumed about what so-and-so is going to respond to you in the social media setting. See, when you use something for an occasion of the flesh, ye bite and devour one another. Take heed that ye be not consumed one another. So when you go so far as to use something for an occasion of the flesh, it's going to be something fleshly that is going to consume you, which is what Satan offers you when he shows you the world in a moment of time, in a YouTube video, um, a bit shoot video, an Odyssey video, which is a horrible platform, actually. 
and uh, Brighton or whatever it is. Okay. This I say then, walk in the capitalist spirit, the Lord himself. And ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Simple, right? But see, can we do that 24 hours a day, seven days a week? No. Not even Paul could do that. Read Acts chapter 21. Read Romans chapter 7. Okay? Not even Paul could walk in the Spirit, the Lord himself, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Oh, wretched man that I am. Okay, he couldn't do it. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Why? Because of this. And it's this that Satan offers you. <laughs> For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Hold your place here. Go to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. That's Song of Solomon. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. <clears throat> hmm. Verse 12. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books, there is no end. And that's true. You know, that, that's a fraction of what I had before we moved here. Got rid of a lot. There are some that have their own personal library. I mean, okay, I understand you have a resource, but there, you know, this is true. Of making of many books, there is no end. There's always a book out there on something. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. Ooh, now let's hold on there. Much study is a weariness of the flesh. Okay? Look at verse 17 in Galatians 5. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, capital S, and the spirit, capital S, against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. And, of course, you tie that into Romans chapter 7. Okay, let's do that. Let's do that. Romans chapter 7. Okay, Romans chapter 7. Verse 19. Oh, no, 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 no. Verse 18 under verse 20. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it. But sin that dwelleth in me. And sin is in flesh. Sin is in flesh. Okay? And we are told, you know, we compare spiritual. The Lord is that spirit. The Lord dwelling within you. Okay? We are to compare spiritual things was spiritual and much study is weary of the flesh when was the last time you spent four hours in the scriptures what happens your feet might get to antsy right might be oh I'm hungry thirsty or whatever this contrary to this the authorized version but see the Bibles <laughs> they they woo -hoo, what is it how do they do that they woo -hoo, upload they uh, uphold the flesh the authorized version is contrary to the flesh because it is a spiritual book it's God's book and we are to compare spiritual things with spiritual. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. You know, you some of you, you read the scriptures for even a half an hour and your flesh is 
crying and whining because it's a weariness to it. Yes. The scriptures are contrary to the flesh. But oh boy, oh, you can hear the scriptures online, can't you? But see, the means to be distracted from that is much greater than if you just shut everything down. Lord, talk to me. Leave me, guide me. Verse 18, But if ye be led of the Spirit, capital S, the Lord himself, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery. Oh, you adulteresses and adult, you adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that friendship with the world is enmity uh, with God. Therefore, those of you who are a friend of the world are the enemy of God. I just brandized that. That's in James chapter 4. Well, you're sitting there on your couch or in your easy chair. Hmm? Soaking it all up. Hmm? Are you friendly? Are you a friend with the world? Hmm? Are you a friend with the world? Adultery. We are, have been espoused to one husband, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. We are the bride of Christ. And ye cannot have fellowship with devils. You cannot eat at the table of the Lord and at the table of devils. Okay? We use the internet and media for the, you know, there are good things on the media and internet. Yes. You can listen to the scriptures. You can find godly preaching still. You can find godly teaching and instruction and righteousness. Yes, you can. But you have to have moderation with the brethren. There has to come a time when you shut things off. Okay? Fornication. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. And these are all things that Satan offers you in a moment of time as you're flipping through the channels. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, emulations. Some people will watch something on the television or on the media and then they will try to emulate what they see. Hmm. There is a true thing. Uh, this was this is true. Uh, I even George Carlin talked about it. You get a Japhethian around a bunch of, a bunch of Hamites. What happens, my Hamitic brethren? What could happen? The Japhethian, after a while, will start to talk like and sound like a Hamite, and vice versa. Vice versa. You get a, a, a Hamite amongst a bunch of Japhethians, what could happen? That Hamite will start to talk like, sound like, act like one of them. That's, a, and that's an actual scientifically proven phenomena. There's actually a name for it, too. I, can't, I don't recall what it is. But, yeah, emulations. When we are to be individual, we are to be distinct. God loves variety. Okay? We are to be like-minded as the body of Christ, the church of the living God, yes. But there's only one you and there's only one me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Even though, uh, like uh, my, me and uh, my best friend, we're very like-minded. Very like-minded. Very similar. Different. Very different, but very similar. Because we, we got the same father. And the Lord knew what he was doing. Okay. And means, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. 
It's almost like a pedophagine fog, a, a drunkenness that comes upon people when they are subjected to way too much media or internet. I, you notice I'm not really using television anymore. Because here's a, here's a television. And in Revelation chapter 17, those who were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Okay. Envying murders, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, kingdom of God spiritual. But the fruit of the capitalist spirit, the Lord himself, is love. And not this mamby-pamby, um, saccharine, sweet, confectionary love that Christianity offers. A love that will tell you truth. A love that will tell you truth. That's love. Joy. There's a big difference between happiness and joy. Peace. Long-suffering. Gentleness. Goodness. Faith. Meekness. Temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Have you done that? We struggle daily, yes, it's a daily war. But are you giving yourself over to that flesh a little too often, a little too, a bit more than you should? Justifying it all the way? If we live in the Spirit, capital S, the Lord himself, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory which Satan offers you through media. Provoking one another and being one another. And Galatians 6, uh, verses 7 on to verse 10. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You can, I can tell when someone spends time in the Word, in the Scriptures. Okay? It comes out in their speech, in their thought process, in their mannerisms, if you're able to see them. Okay? But, but someone who is centered around the world was fed through the media. We put you so, okay? For he that soweth to the flesh shall re shall of the flesh reap corruption. And what is offered to you through the media? Flesh. Yes, again, yes, you can find good things on there. But brethren, people, you need to have a line. And don't cross that line. You need to have time when you say, okay, enough is enough. I'm done for the day. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And he that soweth to the Spirit, capital S, shall of the Spirit, capital S, reap life everlasting, capital S, Spirit, the Lord himself. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men. All men. And how do we do good unto all men? Present to them the truth of Scripture. Either by how we walk or if the Lord open a door that you can speak to them the truth from Scripture. This is, this is how you do good unto all men, telling them the truth of Scripture. Especially, we've already talked about this, especially unto them who are of the household 
of faith. And we are of the Lord's house. The faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Okay? Go to John chapter 11. And right here I'm going to really, really, really hammer this right here. John chapter 11, verses 9 on to verse 10. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? There are twelve hours in a day and twelve hours in a night. Hence, twenty-four hours. If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. Do you know the bright and the blue light of the screen can actually dim the light that may be in you? The light of the body is the eye. Right? Let's think about this. Most people, except for usually the enemies, who are at every waking... I've said this to you before. When you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing you do? Do you wake up in the morning and check your email or your statistics or whatever? Or do you flop out of bed, literally, and with your nose on the carpet, it's like, oh, Lord, you've given me today. Thank you. How do you begin your day? There are 12 hours in a day. Okay. Think about this. Theoretically, we're to get eight hours of sleep, right? Eight hours of sleep. All right? Out of the night, the 12 hours of the night, supposedly, okay? This is in theory. I know this isn't how it is for everybody. I mean, some people only get uh, four to six hours, but go with me, okay? You get eight hours. Eight hours. Eight, 16, 24, okay? So you get eight hours of sleep, okay? What are you going to do with those other two, two hours of that 12 hours of the night, okay? Uh, between sleeping, okay? You sleep for eight hours, are you giving those two hours to prayer and reading the scripture? And then the 12 hours of the day. What are you doing? Are you speaking to each other in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs? Oh, like, because this is what the Lord has called me to. It's like, okay, I got things I got to look up online. I got some research and things to do. Yes, okay. A brethren I need to talk to. Yes, and I'm bad at that. Okay, yes, I am. I, I am. Okay. I am. I'm bad at that. But, okay. Okay, say that's four hours of the day. Okay? What are you going to do with the other eight? Hmm? How are you going to spend time with your spouse, husband, or your wife, huh? Can you talk about things in Scripture? Can you have meaningful conversations? Or does it have to be diverted by having that idiot box on? For ten to for eight or nine eight or nine to ten hours in a day, think about that. You have twelve hours in the of a in the day, like Jesus says. What in the wide world of sports entertainment are you doing out of those twelve hours during the day, having uh, the media blaring in front of you for ten of them? Well, you've well I've already done my duty, but giving the Lord time, all right? You're missing it. You're missing it. You're missing it there, pal. Go to Philippians. Go to Philippians. Philippians 4, verses 4 and verse 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Always. Let your moderation be known unto all men. Lord is at hand. Moderation. Uh, brother, brother, uh, I'm getting out of here. Uh, why? I, I've been online too long. Uh, I've spent about four hours looking up stuff, and I, I got to get away. Okay? All right. Let your moderation be known unto all men. You know, self-government. But there are those out there who despise government. Hmm? What is that? Huh? That's Jude, isn't it? That's Jude. Go to Jude. Jude does not have chapters. 
Go to Jude. Okay, one second. Okay, it was not Jude. Second Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations. Excuse me. And there is no temptation that has taken you, but that which is common to man. And with every temptation, the Lord shall make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lusts, in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, self-regulating, self-government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Self-willed. Self-willed. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Natural brute beasts that despise government, self-government, moderation. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, take your little pen and circle everything, okay? In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known, to, known unto God. And the God of peace, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds. Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatso, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. And see, while there are good things here to be found on internet, on media and stuff like that, that's a small minority. The majority is there to deceive you, to distract you, to, may, to take you away, your mind away from where it ought to be on. We have to have moderation. For those who use this world as not abusing it. And I have fallen, I've fallen for that, in, fallen for that quite a bit, actually. Because one thing leads to another. That's why I work at trying to keep things here and disassociate, turn things off. There was a while ago when we lived over on Madison Street, where we lost power for three days. Everything. Everything. Okay? Everything. And it was a widespread thing. And um, phone communication was even down for that three days, as I recall. And couldn't go online. Couldn't know anything. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was refreshing. It was recharging. It was beautiful. We need more of that, brethren. It's actually healthy, too. Ephesians chapter 5. A good way to finish this up. Verses 1 on verse 17. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication, not just physical, 
spiritual fornication. You gotta be careful you're not fornicating with devils spiritually. And all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. And do you not see un uh, fornication, uncleanness, covetousness, filthiness, foolish talking, jesting? Uh, do you not see that all portrayed uh, to you on the media? I mean, if you are one of those who can just have, listen to godly things, scripture, sermons by brethren, uh, more power to you. But see, what happens is the longer that you leave that stuff going, the more greater the risk and chance that you might be distracted. There's a time and place for everything. And a time for every season under heaven. You know, regulate it. Have a little discipline. Have a little self-government. It's like, you know, I've, 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 I've done this. I'm, I'm turning it off. I'm shutting it off. For this you know, that no whoremonger, which our enemies are, they're whores. They got their grubby little hands in all kinds of places nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater. And the Lord abhorreth the covetousness, the covetous, what is that? Uh, Psalm 10, verse 9, I believe that is. Hmm. Psalm 10, verse 9, I believe that is. I believe that is. I believe that is, yes. Okay. All right. Where are we? <laughs> Where are we? Okay. Verse 5, For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Oh, Colossians 2, 8, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. A little doesn't hurt. He always does. Hey, you got to do it to make a living, right? Yeah, that's okay. Where's the moderation? Where's the self-government? Let no man deceive you with vain words. Yea, hath God said. Yeah. For because of these things come at the wrath of God upon the children of dis disobedience. Children of disobedience. You've heard the truth and you didn't take it. Okay? You didn't believe it. You're a child of disobedience. God's wrath is upon you. Okay? Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Be not ye unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a, sh for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. The deception, the wickedness, the lasciviousness. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatso doth, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. And our Lord talks about that. Hold your place here, as we are, have already covered in John chapter three, well, which we I believe we covered in the previous video. <clears throat> Uh, verses 19 on to verse 21 in John 3. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. And Jesus Christ is the light. Okay? But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Okay? 
Verse 13 again in Ephesians 5. But all things that are approved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. And it's a spiritual sleep that can come upon you when you are distracted by Satan's devices through the media. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Cautiously. Walk cautiously. Walk circumspectly. Not as fools, who say in their heart there is no God, but as wise, fearing the Lord. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and then we will be done. Verses 3 on to verse 7. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. You know, it used to be the enemy in the living room was the television. But see, the evolution of it has been what? Hell phones, the internet. And, yeah, and yes, yes, there are godly men. You can hear the scriptures read online. Amen, hallelujah. But that is a small fraction. The majority of it has been given unto Satan. So brethren, have a little discipline, have some moderation. Like today, after this, I'm going to get this uploaded, that's going to be it. That's going to be it until around, uh, what, between, uh, hopefully if I'm awake, uh, between 8.30 and 9.30 when, you know, I get a phone call from a uh, brother or whatever, you know, it's going to be in here in Brother Alexander's room. Okay, because that hook is just way too easy for any of us, saved or lost. That's why we have to abstain from all appearance of evil. And if you're going to be using this, like Paul admonishes us, don't abuse it. Don't abuse it. <laughs> because I suppose you can call media um, communication. And in and of itself, there's nothing wrong in and of itself with communication. There are evil communications which we are to watch out for. But there again, you, gotta, you have to have discipline. You have to have moderation. Because media is just way too seductive. And evil men shall wax worse and worse. Evil men and seducers, excuse me, shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. That's going to be it for this video. Just kind of not, not too structured. Uh, again, not what I was hoping or planning to do, but this is, you know, with yesterday, this was something, you know, I'm like, I'm looking at these things at the wrestling, and then I was distracted. It's like, ah! Oh! And then the Lord's like, <laughs> the enemy on the altar, Brad. Wow. Wow. So. 
This week's almost over. Tomorrow is Saturday, the end of the week, and Sunday is the first day of the week. For your own benefit, take one day, a 24-hour period, one day, and shut it off. Step away for one day. And, and what are you going to do? Well, there's this one book that I, I constantly uh, talk to you from and uh, uh, very much uh, recommend to you. Uh, it's called The Authorized Version of the Scriptures. Um, and this is what God wrote. Why don't you spend more time in this? You're too busy. Don't get me started on that. It's going to be it for this video, brethren. Seriously. Take a, take a time out. This coming week, brethren, people, can you go one day without checking your email? Can you go a day without turning on the internet? Hmm? What would happen if you and your spouse, your husband or your wife, like that dear brother from Africa said, what would happen if you were just there and had no, no distractions, just you, your wife, and the Lord who is... You know, and me and my house, we will serve the Lord. How would how would that become? What would what would ha what would happen? Could you do it? Or have we been too ingratiated into the era of convenience and entertainment? So, thank you for watching this. If you do, we love you. See you in the next video.